Man, talk about complex servants. Unlike the topic of today's video, I sure hope that you guys are listening with both ears, because there is a lot to go over. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, with a spotlight for the one servant that you do not want to go shoe shopping with, Van Gogh. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers and how you utilize her effectively, and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready to paint some not so happy little sunflowers, then make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and ring my bell so you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. And now, onto Van Gogh's stats. Van Gogh has a max HP of 15,000 and a max attack of 11,220. Her HP is high for her class, while her attack is just about average for a foreigner. Outside of her class, her HP stat remains exceptionally high even compared to other SSRs, while her attack is unfortunately below average. When it comes to her command cards, Go has 4 hits on her quick card, 3 hits on her arts, 4 hits on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.76% and a star rate of 14 14.9%. Her heavy quick deck and high hit counts give Go very good star generating. However, her NP gain is inconsistent due to only having a single arts card. Go's stat spread is heavily defensive and supportive with excellent star generating and a high HP pool, but with low offensive capabilities. Taking a look at her skills, Van Gogh's first skill is Void Space Fine Arts Rank B+. This skill grants her guts for one time, lasting for 5 turns, and reviving her with between 1000 and 3000 HP, depending on level. It will also inflict 3 stacks of curse on Van Gogh, and charge her NP gauge for each stack of curse that she has, between 5 and 10 percent, also depending on level. Her second skill is Het Gelehuis, the Yellow House, rank A+. This skill reduces the defense of all enemies for 3 turns, between 10 and 20 percent depending on level. It also reduces their quick resistance by 20 percent, grants the entire party evasion for 1 hit, and heals the party by 300 every turn for 5 turns. As a demerit though, it will inflict curse on the entire party for 10 turns. And finally, her last skill is Soul of Water Channels rank EX. This skill allows Van Gogh to target an ally and increase that ally's attack for 3 turns, between 20 and 30%. It also increased their crit star absorption rate for 3 turns, between 300 and 600%, both depending on level. And it will also grant that ally an on attack buff for 3 turns, that will remove a curse effect when attacking with a quick card, and increase their attack by an additional 10%. As a demerit, Van Gogh will also absorb all of the enemy and party ally curses to herself. As for her passives, Van Gogh has existed outside the domain rank A, which grants her 2 crit stars every turn and increases her own debuff resistance by 10%, Insanity rank C, which increases her buster card effectiveness by 6%, Item Construction rank B-, which increases her debuff success rate by 7.5%, Divinity rank B+, which increases her damage by 185, and Curse of the Sunflower rank A, which makes sure that her HP can never drop below 1 from curse damage. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Van Gogh has a quick deck with Quick Quick Quick, Arts Buster, and an Arts Noble Phantasm. Van Gogh's Noble Phantasm is Daystar and Noct. It's an AoE Arts Noble Phantasm that inflicts terror on all enemies. It also increases the party's crit damage for 3 turns, between 50 and 100%, depending on level. It further increases the crit damage of foreigner allies by another 100%. It generates 10 crit stars every turn for 3 turns, and it increases the party's attack for 3 turns, between 30 and 50%, depending on overcharge. As a foreigner, Van Gogh needs a ridiculous amount of ascension mats, so to make things easier, I'm just gonna list what mats she needs, and if you want to know the optimal places to farm those mats, then I'll include a link to the drop table in the description down below for your reference. For ascension, she's going to need 10 each of Void Dust, Chains, Phoenix Plumes, Black Tallow, Chaos Talons, Lanugos, Bloodstone Tears, and Spirit Roots. As for skill leveling, Go is going to need 10 Void Dust and Yggdrasil Seeds, 12 Pages, Homunculus Babies, and Aurora Steel, and 15 Spirit Roots, Fruits of Longevity, and Comet Shards per skill. Van Gogh is living proof that you should never judge a servant by their cover. I would never peg Van Gogh as an offensive juggernaut who can punch out literal gods. But then again, I'm a business major, so what do I know about art? What I do know though 
is that Van Gogh's stats are very deceptive. Despite her high HP and low attack, she is definitely more of a DPS than a support. And while her NP gain is low on paper, her consistent star generating allows her to crit very easily, which makes her NP gain a lot better in practice. But Van Gogh isn't just any old crit DPS. She has some of the most unique and innovative mechanics that we've ever seen in FGO. Her entire kit revolves around applying and benefiting from curses. Her second skill, the Yellow House, not only applies curse to herself, but all of her allies as well. It also decreases the defense and quick resistance of all enemies and grants the party evasion and healing per turn. Given how many buffs and debuffs this skill grants alone, the curse demerit is well worth it, especially since it's only a measly 100 damage per turn, which is even less than the healing that the skill gives. Yellow House is fantastic both offensively and defensively, and it enables all of Go's kit. Defensively, it's basically Harp of Healing, granting the entire team evasion, which is great for boss fights and surviving a AoE NPs. Offensively, the defense down and quick resist down are both powerful AoE debuffs that allow Go's crits to hit significantly harder, especially given her quick focus deck. It can also work as a supportive skill to buff up the team's DPS on quick teams. The second half of Go's offensive combo comes from her third skill, Soul of the Water Channel. This skill allows Go to target one ally and increase their star absorb and attack, as well as grant them an on attack buff that removes one curse debuff whenever they attack with a quick card and increases their attack by an additional 10 as a demerit though, Go absorbs all of the curse debuffs from her allies and enemies and applies them to herself, which as we'll soon see, isn't really much of a demerit. This is the skill that enables Go to become a monstrous crit DPS. Not only are the attack and star absorb buffs very strong, but the uptime on this skill is high as well, with only a 5 turn cooldown. So Go can keep these buffs active for most of the battle. Between the amount of stars that she's able to create and the star absorb, Go almost never has has any issues landing crits. Of course, this skill can also be used to support as well. Targeted star absorb is very rare, so that alone makes Go a uniquely strong crit support. Finally, and most importantly, the centerpiece of Go's kit is her first skill, Void Space Fine Arts. This is the skill that gets everything going. Pun intended. It grants 3 additional stacks of curse on go, gives her guts, and then converts all of her curse debuffs into NP charge. At max rank, go gains 10% charge per curse debuff. And in case you're wondering how that works out, if you activate all of go's skills on turn 1, that equates to a 60% NP charge, which is ludicrously good. Go can easily Noble Phantasm on turn 1 and then start snowballing from there with this skill. But in addition to all of that, the Guts effect shouldn't be overlooked either. It has a 5 turn uptime and the skill has a 6 turn cooldown. So Go basically has a near permanent Guts for the whole battle. Go's skill set is absolutely bonkers, but you should level her NP charge first so that you can get your Noble Phantasm off quicker, followed by her attack buff for extra damage, and then Yellow House last. I also recommend taking mana loading and extra attack up for her append skills. But for as strong as Go's skills are, what really sets her apart is her Noble Phantasm. It doesn't deal damage, but it does inflict terror on all enemies, increases the party's crit damage and attack, generates crit stars, and further buffs foreigner allies' crit damage by a massive 100%. Much like Super Orion, this Noble Phantasm buffs the user to astronomical proportions. As a foreigner herself, Go also benefits from the additional 100% crit damage buff, so even at NP1, Go can grant herself a whopping 150% bonus crit damage from this NP alone, on top of the additional 30% attack buff and the 2030 star generating effect. This NP gives Go everything she needs to be consistent and hit like a truck. And what's even better is that in the right team comps, Go can even loop this Noble Phantasm and continuously stack the buffs, so that she can reach absolutely insane numbers like 300% bonus crit damage or 90% extra attack. Thanks to that, Go is up there with Super Orion as one of the most snowball-y servants in the game. And once she gets going, she can easily hit for over 100,000 or 200,000 per crit. If you're planning on using Go as a DPS, which you should, the basic turn 1 combo for her is to activate her second skill, followed by her third, and then her first. This way she's able to activate all of her buffs and take advantage of the full 60% charge to Noble Phantasm with. But Go can also serve well as a support, specifically in quick crit teams where she can generate stars, 
give good damage buffs and weaken enemies. Her kit gives her an incredible amount of versatility and she can do everything from stalling to buffing to healing. Go has some of the highest sustained damage output of any servant in FGO and she is a veritable Swiss army knife when it comes to utility, but that does come at a cost. As is the case with most crit DPSs, Go is susceptible to bad card RNG. If she isn't able to string together brave chains or get consistent crits, she can fall off pretty hard. Additionally, she has an incredibly high skill floor and can be tough to use. Go also only works in very specific team comps with very specific supports, even within quick teams. She isn't a plug and play DPS that can just fit anywhere, and many players may not even have the supports that she needs to excel. And on that note, let's talk team comps. As a DPS, Go mostly needs quick buffs and NP charge so she can continuously snowball. And in that regard, there are only a couple of servants who can deliver, namely Scotty, Osakabe Hime, or another Van Gogh. I don't normally mention Scotty in my spotlights because she's kind of a given, but in this case, Scotty is a uniquely strong support for Van Gogh due to her powerful NP battery, quick buffing, and crit damage buffs. Osakabe Hime also delivers a good amount of charge and buffing if you lack Scotty. And if all else fails, a double goal team is surprisingly strong since they can can both buff each other and stack curses. As a support, Go tends to work best with other quick crit servants or foreigners like Abby, Kama, and the upcoming Santa Karna. In all cases, Go can improve their consistency with her targeted star absorb skill, buff their crit damage, and keep them alive with evasion and healing. Go's bond CE is self-portrait at Chaldea. It generates 8 crit stars per turn, and it increases the party's crit damage by 15%. This is an excellent bond CE if you're using Go as a support since it's basically a 2030 that also buffs crit damage. It's really good. You can also just use a regular 2030 instead, or you can go with Traces of Christmas, Gem Magecraft, or True Crimson Spear Teacher if you're going for DPS. Fist of Hail is also a good CE for Go. It grants starting crit stars and quick card effectiveness, and you can get it for free when it releases during Summer 7. As for command codes, any crit buffing CE is a good fit for Go, especially ones that buff quick cards like Phantasmal Horse. Overall, Van Gogh is an elite crit DPS. She's easily capable of putting up damage numbers comparable to Super Orion due to her incredibly loaded NP and skill set, while also providing a lot of invaluable utility and support to the team. She does still suffer from the usual drawbacks of a crit DPS though, that being bad card RNG, and she isn't really an easy servant to use because she requires optimal team comps and conditions to work properly, so not everyone will be able to get the full mileage out of her. Still though, Go gets an A from me. I think she's a uniquely strong servant that is capable of hanging out with the best of them. So if you do have Scotty or if you want to make a really viable quick team, then I would highly recommend rolling for Go, especially since she's only going to get better in the future. But if you don't, then don't worry about it, she isn't exactly a must have servant. And those are my thoughts on Van Go. Personally, I think she's one of the most fun servants ever put into the game and I absolutely love her gimmick so I can't wait to roll for her. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our discord, chill with us on twitch and follow us on twitter and I'll see you all in the next servant spotlight. So Brony out, later.